Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it's been about a month since we started getting good data back from New Horizons, which had of course been investigating a tiny planetoid out on the edge of the solar system in the darkness of space, and now they've actually added a model of it into uh, NASA's Eyes on the Solar System, which is an excellent package, it's free to download and it lets you look at all this information. The data has been slow to come back, partly because of the government shutdown, but mostly because New Horizons connection to us is rather slow. It'll take another two years or so to get all the data down. But some of the results we have seen have been pretty cool. This is now the best quality image we have of this object, and if you remember, they decided to name the large part Ultima and the smaller part Thule. And of course, many people compared this object to a snowman, but new data has meant that these comparisons fall a little flat. These new images were taken as the spacecraft was leaving, and they show the crescent. I mean, obviously it's not a crescent because it's a two-lobed body, but it's a very thin sliver of illumination along the set, side. And it's actually blurred out because they had to make the exposure long enough to make this visible, and also see the stars in the background. There's not enough light to illuminate the dark side of the object, so we don't know its shape. But we can see where the stars are and where they are being occluded. So by figuring out when the stars appear and disappear, you can get some depth data on this object. And it turns out that it's not a pair of spheres. Based on the data we have, the objects are actually much flatter than they are wide. And so when we take this 3D object and rotate it onto its side, we find that Ultima is actually a lot flatter than Thule. And the upshot of this is it actually means that Thule has much larger mass, so the spin axis is moved in closer towards that smaller lobe. Now this is a huge surprise, but equally we already have some great theories as to why this is the way it is. First of all, you've got to ask, why is the spin axis aligned with these uh, oblate bodies? Well, actually, if you think about it, when these two objects are spiraling in towards each other, there are tidal forces. And the highest moment of inertia rotation axes will tend to end up aligning with the orbit axes, or you know, the binary orbit axes. Therefore, these things will end up landing edge on like this. In some ways, it's similar to the phenomena that causes uh, rings to collect around a planet's equator, because the equatorial bulge will cause the objects to process, and then the internal damping of the rings will cause them to basically settle along the equator, regardless of what orientation they started in. The Saturnian system also offers us a couple of very flat moons, which are interesting comparisons. So this is Atlas, it's a small like 10 kilometer class moon, which sits inside the rings, and it gets this very flat nature, probably because the ring particles are collecting on a ridge around its equator. And in a similar vein, the moon Pan shows this ridge even more obviously. You can see that there's a much more spherical object in the middle, and then as it sat in the rings and rotated, the ring particles have collected and formed this almost wall-like structure around the middle of the object. Now, I'm not saying that uh, Ultima Thule formed inside a ring structure, but it could be an indication that it formed in a very thin, flat, cold disk of material. Or it could be that these shapes were simply flattened out by the tidal forces as these two objects ended up orbiting towards each other and eventually merging. I'm sure we'll get more clues as to how this actually happened as more data comes down over the next couple of years. But this, this occultation-based result is you know, really quite surprising and really, really cool. And while we're here talking about stars being eclipsed in the Kuiper Belt, a Japanese group claims to have seen what could be the shadow of a Kuiper Belt object only 1.3 kilometers across. Now, I should say, this isn't a discovery. This is a single star which was eclipsed for the right amount of time to be you know, explained away by a Kuiper Belt object which is too small to see by any other means. 
To discover an object, you need to have several observations at different times so you can, uh, you know, essentially draw a line and figure out what orbit it's on so that other people can then go and figure out where it is. Now, one really cool thing about this research is that it was done with what amounts to consumer-grade astronomical hardware, telescopes and cameras. And that's always pretty nice to see something you could do with essentially backyard gear. Of course, New Horizons is at the other end of the scale, and it's pretty darn cool as well. And I expect Ultima Thule will get cooler as we get more data back from New Horizons over the next two years. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>